shocking allegations tonight against the former head physician of the U.S. women's Olympic gymnastics team, accused of sexually assaulting young girls in his care over a period of 19 years. Allegations of an extraordinary abuse of power against girls too young to understand what was happening to them and afraid to speak out. But now, strengthened by one another, the accusers are coming forward in droves. Here's ABC's Lindsay Janice. He was helping me get to my Olympic dream, something I've been dreaming about since I was three years old. I didn't even question it. In 2000, Jamie Dancher took home a bronze medal for Team USA Gymnastics. A shining triumph. Right. But behind it, she says, a painful secret. Uh, me personally, he did, he did touch my breasts uh, underneath my T-shirt. For young gymnasts with Olympic dreams, Dr. Larry Nasser was like a god. And rotate again. The official physician for Team USA. Squeeze, hips flat. He was the absolute best. And I was very lucky. I was very honored to be able to see him. But now, athletes from around the country are coming forward to say they now realize he sexually abused them, all under the guise of medical treatment. I just remember he asked me, not to wear underwear and to wear loose shorts. And I thought that was a little bit weird. Earlier today, Nasser was charged with 22 counts of criminal sexual conduct in Michigan, five of which relate to victims who were under 13 years old. The charges relate to Nasser's time in the state where he was a faculty member at Michigan State University. He pleaded not guilty. This guy is despicable. This guy is uh, disgusting and he's a monster. Nasser was Team USA Gymnastics head physician for 19 years. You can see him here helping Carrie Strug in this iconic moment after she injured her ankle vaulting in the 1996 Olympics. When did you first meet Dr. Nasser? I had just finished world championships at the age of 15 and through most of that year I had had extreme hip pain like to the point where I would wake up in the morning unable to walk. Jessica Howard was the U.S. national champion in rhythmic gymnastics from 1999 to 2001. She says she met Nasser at the famed Caroli Ranch, seen here in videos from USA Gymnastics. Located outside Houston, it's an elite Olympics training ground run by legendary coaches Bella and Marta Caroli. They've coached 10 gymnastics champions, including greats like Simone Biles and Nadia Comaneci. During Team USA's training season, the young athletes lived on the ranch where Nasser treated them. You come from a, an entire environment of silence and strength and... Doing what you're told. Doing what you're told, obedience, and I just did what I was told. So you showed up in your shorts and no underwear, mm -hmm. and you laid on the table, and what happened next? He began massaging kind of my, my quads and my IT bands, and then he got closer and closer, you know, to more intimate areas, and then he penetrated me. And did he say anything to you when he was doing no. that? But I remember feeling rigid on the table, just very uncomfortable. What were you thinking? I was thinking, what's, ha what's happening? Um, I was the most innocent 15-year-old you could find. Like, I was so trusting. So it didn't even go through my head that this man could be hurting me. When he first did the procedure, we'll call it, I was either 13 or 14. Dancher says she met Dr. Nasser when she made the gymnastics national team, seeking treatment for back pain. He used to do a lot of soft tissue massaging um, exercises. He said that there is a procedure or a way to get my hips back in alignment when he would put his fingers into me vaginally. And I don't know how I wasn't uncomfortable, but just being a kid and being a little girl and being in such an intense environment, um, I was so miserable because I felt like I got in trouble every day for something else. I had no idea back then that he was doing something wrong. You think of gymnastics, you think of the happiness, the joy, the medals won, the nation cheering for these young athletes. And then to hear this sordid, awful, disgusting, appalling story, oh, it, it's just beyond troubling. It is one of the worst things we have seen in U.S. Olympic history. More than 60 women and girls have filed complaints against Dr. Nasser. 
Some, like Dancher, are also suing coaches Bella and Marta Caroli, saying they created an environment at their ranch that gave Nasser the opportunity to abuse young gymnasts. They created an atmosphere with uh, intimidation, fear, and control. You know, we weren't really allowed to talk. They controlled what we ate. They controlled when we spoke. Dr. Nasser wasn't just alone with these girls. He was alone with them in their sleeping quarters, not just at the ranch, but at uh, venues all over the world where they went to compete. California attorney John Manley represents many of the accusers, including Dancher and Howard. What Nasser did is came in with a sunny personality, I'm a nice man, you can trust me, gave the kids candy, uh, listened to their problems, and they liked him, and they trusted him. And he used that trust to disguise sexual assault as medical treatment. He was very nice, and he was on the gymnast side. You know, he cared about what you were going through. You know, so he was kind of a break from all of the, the endless, you know, negativity that you dealt with on a daily basis. He was a friend. A spokesman for the Corollis tells ABC News they deny the existence of a toxic environment and that the Corollis say they were never aware that Dr. Nasser would be performing any procedures which are now the subject of the present litigation. Many are now asking questions about how the doctor had so much access to some of the most elite young athletes in the country for so many years. This shines an incredible light on the vulnerability of these young athletes. We're on the elite national team. We're training at the world and the Olympic level. Your parents don't go with you. And they trusted USA Gymnastics to make sure that they were protecting us. Dr. Nassar was in my room late at night giving me treatment in my own bed. Dancher's lawsuit, like some others, also names USA Gymnastics, claiming they failed to protect her. In a statement, USA Gymnastics said they were outraged that a physician would exploit his patients in the alleged manner and reiterated they dismissed Dr. Nasser when they learned of the accusations and reported him to the FBI. Both Dancher and Howard tell us it took them years to come to grips with what they say Dr. Nasser did to them and to decide to speak out. Do you have any desire to face him? I don't know if I could at this point. Um, but again, I, I find strength in the fact that there are so many others that have come forward and I believe that together we could face him easily and show him that we are not victims anymore. We are not innocent children and we can fight back now. I also have six nieces and majority of them do gymnastics and I couldn't, I couldn't live with the fact that this could happen to them. If I didn't say anything, I just, I just couldn't live with that. Today, the Michigan Attorney General says they'll be seeking the longest possible sentence against Larry Nasser, each first-degree charge punishable by up to life in prison. He'll also have to face several civil lawsuits, including Dancher's and Howard's. When somebody sacrifices their childhood and their adolescence to compete for their country in the Olympic Games, and we, and we, we watch them and we see those smiles, I want people to know, and they want people to know, behind those smiles, in some instances, is a tremendous amount of pain that shouldn't be there. And the adults in charge of USA Gymnastics are responsible for that, and, and they need to make that right. What do you want to see happen to Dr. Nasser? I want him to spend the rest of his life in prison. The number of people that have come forward, the things that he's done, are reprehensible and an affront to basic human rights and I believe that he deserves to be punished for what he's done. For Nightline, I'm Lindsay Janice in New York.